Welcome to session number 11 in the Anglican Tradition series. Today I want to discuss the importance of C.S. Lewis and T.S. Eliot as significant Anglicans of the 20th century. C.S. Eliot has been in many ways co-opted by the evangelical tradition and made to appear as if in fact he is one of them. C.S. Lewis in his time was a medieval Renaissance scholar and he didn't have a great deal of patience for large elements of the Protestant tradition. But as a result, in the late 1950s and 1960s, Wheaton College, which is considered the Vatican of the Evangelicals, drew a lot of the writings of Lewis, the Inklings, and many of that group to Wheaton College, and many came to study then Lewis and that particular group. And it was made to appear as if Wheaton College uh, had all this, all these writings, this, the group of seven and others, then in fact Lewis and that group really must have been proto-evangelicals or reformed uh, at least. Um, this has meant that for C.S. Lewis in North America, to a greater or larger extent, he's become a plaything of the reformed and evangelical world. Uh, C.S. Lewis was Anglican. I think it can be clearly argued that he was a Catholic Anglican, not Catholic in terms of elaborate liturgy, but Catholic in terms of the wide, expansive, and comprehensive understanding of the Christian tradition as embodied uh, in the patristic era and has worked out through the medieval and unfolded, uh, Lewis argued, in the Renaissance period. He argued that there was a split in Western history between the Renaissance, which was the flowering of the best of the classical tradition that you get in people like Thomas More, Erasmus, John Collett, and this group, and the Reformation, which began the deformation of Christianity. And so within uh, the thinking of C.S. Lewis, he can hardly be equated with uh, large elements of Protestant Christianity, which have co-opted him uh, for their purposes, even though such popular series as the Chronicles of Narnia or Mere Christianity uh, have, have, taken their, um, have played their role in warming him up to, to significant elements of North American uh, Christianity. But the, uh, the uh, C.S. Lewis must be seen as a Catholic Anglican, uh, certainly suspicious of large elements, as I've mentioned, of Protestant Christianity, arguing in one of his books, The Discarded Image, that in fact the great image of the classical world has been discarded by the modern and only to the degree we have a, a, a much deeper understanding of that. Uh, we will we'll, our, our, our grasp uh, and feel for the faith be much more meaningful and animated. When T.S. Eliot came to England, um, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien, and this whole group of them, both at Oxford and Cambridge, were very suspicious of Eliot. With the writing of The Wasteland and the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock and many others, they felt T.S. Eliot had very much capitulated to the modern world, and he was not a person who could be trusted. He was There was something very affected about T.S. Eliot, and he was someone that um, really uh, did not have a feel or firm grasp on what uh, the Christian faith was about. Uh, there was too much despair in, in Eliot's writings. He was too exoteric and not accessible in his writings. T.S. Eliot's journey, though, was one from the wasteland in which he saw the modern world for what it was and a dead end in many ways for the soul and its longing for meaning. And Eliot's journey to Anglicanism uh, is summed up very nicely in his great work, The Four Quartets, in which many feel that, in fact, the Nobel Prize was given to him for this. Uh, T.S. Eliot became much more involved with the Church of England at all sorts of levels than, than did C.S. Lewis. And in the early years when Lewis would send articles to Eliot to be published, Eliot would not publish them, and there was an ongoing animosity between C.S. Lewis and T.S. Eliot. But in the last 15 years of their life, Charles Williams brought Eliot and Lewis together, and it was the beginning of a relationship that lasted 15 years. And uh, interesting enough, Williams died the next day, and uh, C.S. Lewis and T.S. Eliot warmed up together immensely, both were very committed to uh, uh, reviving the classical view of Anglicanism. Both were very Catholic in their Anglicanism. And both are attempted to articulate the richness and fullness of that particular heritage and tradition in a way uh, that was accessible to the world that we lived in. And so two very important Anglicans that should be heeded and heard for very different reasons, uh, C.S. Lewis and T.S. Eliot, as classical Catholic Anglicans.